Happy New Year and welcome to EV Show Episode 2. Whoa. I'm, oh. Episode 2? <laughs> uh, I'm Eric Hutchison, a co-host with... Uh, Michael Bream. Look at that. See, I gave my full name, Hutch. I'm learning. I'm taking English classes. <laughs> uh, you're doing great, man. Uh, you know, let's start off just thanking our viewers, and uh, I, we really appreciate it. A couple people tuned in, I think more than four. I, we did have a few people, and there was a few comments as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, all constructive criticism. I, 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 we try to pay attention to everything. Yeah, even the guy that just said, hey, your show's total <laughs> 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 I read that. What I wonder about that was one of the better comments. I bet he's a barrel of fun. Oh, I can't wait to have him out in the in the uh, the E36. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, gosh, man, great year ahead, right? We got all kinds of events planned. We're gonna have a, a EV West open house like we did this last, basically a summer party at the shop. Uh, we're gonna have a little car show outside. A lot of local guys in San Diego gonna bring their cars in. Um, open up the shop and just have fun. So that's this summer. We're going to go back to Laguna Seca. And we're going to go have a little camping trip at Refuel like we did last year. We had a great trip That's up the there. West Car Electric Car Hangout Spot, right? It, it was. I mean, man, we had Otmar from uh, Cafe Electric. We had uh, David Bernardo from Zelectric. We had Jehu Garcia. Uh, we had uh, Mike Stewart out there who does the boats over at uh, Flux. I mean, we had it, man, it was awesome. So this is getting bigger and bigger every year. And we expect a, probably a record-breaking crowd this season yeah, and the participation. Yeah. And you can't argue with sitting around a campfire doing shots of tequila at Laguna Seca. I'm in. I'm, <laughs> I'm done, signed up. Done. So that's going to be this summer. We're going to do that. We're also uh, going to go back to Adams Motorsport Park, and we're going to rent out the track and do some drifting again. Uh, viewers might have noticed the video from earlier this year. Remember, we took uh, the 818 up there and did some drifting and let some smoke out of the tires. Uh, Jay, who was drifting his bus, wasn't he? Dude, he was like <laughs> riding me in the M3 the whole time. What's up with that? And, uh, and David had, uh, took his Beetle out there, the orange Beetle, and was uh, flinging it around the track pretty good. I can't wait. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm in on that yeah. all the way. Yeah, right. And, uh, and then I think we're going to go south of the border later in the year, but we'll We'll save that. Uh, we got a little announcement in the next show we're going to do. Well, what's neat about this show, which is different from our first episode, I can almost call this our first episode, is we actually have a lot of segments. We have products, we have projects, we have tech segments, and we have news. Yeah, I think by my count, we have like 10 segments or something like that today. Well, Plus or minus one or two. I think we want to so. start catching up on some segments. Yeah, let's get caught up. Um, you know, before we take off and check out the Ferrari, I just wanted to mention, you know, speaking of Laguna Seca and camping, uh, last year we had Dominic Yoni. Last two years we had him out there from Autoblog Green. And he actually, uh, Matt, took him for a drive in the M3, uh, took him for some hot laps. At Laguna, <laughs> right? And uh, he loved it. So then uh, when we went back last year, we're like, hey, dude, drive the car. And uh, he respectfully declined. He was like, man, it's your, it's your car. I don't want to. After the event, he came up to me and he said, hey, you know, I should have driven the car. So we're going to get him in the car this year. I think we should have him drive both that and the Ferrari this year. Yeah. <laughs> is, the, is the Ferrari going to make it? It's going to go to Laguna okay. Seca. So we're going to camp at Laguna Seca. And, um, you know, Dominic did a great article on the show. He covered the show for us. We're, you know, appreciate it, Dominic, over there at Autoblog Green. And uh, we also had Jay Cole over at Inside EVs cover uh, the show. And uh, Car Scoops and Gas 2.0. We just really appreciate the coverage. We appreciate the support. You know, thank you very much. Yeah, much and, appreciated. Um, Tremendous. Yeah, work. yeah. And stick with us. I think we're going to try and do more of these this year. Uh, if we stay on schedule, you know, about the first of every month, we'll, we'll kick something out. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying. We have a... Uh... Oh, I can't contain it. We have to look at what we did. Yeah. So let's get into it. We got a lot of segments. You know, we got to apologize. We never really formally introduced your Ferrari. And we have a segment later in the show that's going to show uh, us doing some work on it. Someone's voting to Someone's see voting the first 90 days um, of the Ferrari project. So we're just going to do a, a real fast-paced overview to get you up. And then we'll show you the last 30 days in a second segment later in the show. Yeah. We're just going to catch them up to speed here. So uh, let's check out the first Ferrari segment.
So, yeah. That's Sweet. a proper introduction. Yeah. Uh, 90 days and two minutes or less. Yeah, and you know, uh, I've never seen a paint job get done so quick. Those guys are fast. I yeah. couldn't believe I didn't get any paint on yeah. my mustache. Yeah, they were on. You know, usually you go through this project and you're all done. You got to send your car out to paint and they mess up all the wiring and everything, but you're doing it right. We got it painted yeah. before you even knew it was painted. Yeah, bring the car in here shiny, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, on the so we, we, that was a catch up segment. We never properly introduced your Ferrari like we should. So right. now that we've got some segments going on, you know, we got the hybrid uh, sidecar motorcycle project. The Earl. The Earl. The Russian yeah. Earl. Yeah, and we got John Roselli. He's going to do a proper introduction. There's not a lot of work because we're just getting started, but we're going to introduce the project. So we just have a real brief video clip. We're going to show John Roselli and his uh, Earl. Okay, let's check it out. Nice, roll it. Hey, welcome to EV West. We're with John Roselli, one of the main guys doing a lot of technical stuff here in the shop. He is working on his own project, uh, and it's unique. It's the first uh, EV West shop motorcycle plus sidecar. So, John, what are you doing with this project? Well, this project is not only the first EV West project sidecar motorcycle, but probably the only hybrid sidecar motorcycle in the world right now. Um, what I did was I added an AC9 motor, a 1238 controller. Uh, I had a bunch of uh, 200 amp hour Thunder Sky batteries in the uh, sidecar, which are out now because I had, as the hybrid, it had a gas engine, still does, but it's a nightmare. It's, um, it's breaking down all the time. These are notorious for um, high maintenance and electric vehicles are just much simpler. So I'm gonna tear out the gas engine, put in um, probably a higher powered motor, go from AC9 to maybe AC20. If, if I'm lucky, maybe up to AC35, you know, more power is better, but we'll, we'll see how that goes in the next couple months. What kind of performance do you really want to see out of this when you modify it? Well, a lot. I want to get the best performance I can. I'm going to put in some 18650 batteries, two in series, two in parallel, and they're going to be about 110 volt. Um, uh, it's going to be a 110 volt system. So that should be a significant amount of power to um, throw some some of the rocks out of the out of the back tires. Oh, because it's a two-wheel drive system. So right now the two-wheel drive system set up for the hybrid. But as soon as I make it all electric, I'm putting the uh, shaft back in the, through the differential. So where are you going to put go. your girlfriend in this car? Well, now that I have a girlfriend and the Nicoles are uh, no longer uh, something to worry about, there's going to be enough room in the sidecar. Uh, the batteries are going to lay flat, the 18650s will leave enough room for um, a person or my dog or both if I can really squeeze them in there. Um, that but, is awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see you card. as you progress with this project and look forward to seeing more segments uh, in the future shows. Yeah, in the next few months I'll, I'll show everybody what's going on with it and how it's progressing. Excellent. So. So there's the Earl update, nice and short, you know, just an introduction, wanted to show people the motorcycle. You know, those, those bikes, um, it's, it's a knockoff of the original German one, the BMW. And in World War II, they had those two-wheel drive bikes and they can make it through the mud and all that. Uh, Harley Davidson copied them. So and, it's a uh, Robin duplicate as a standard yeah, business R &D, model. Right, R &D. right. R and D. And after the war, you know, Harley <laughs> took most of them back and destroyed them. And if you have one of these, uh, you know, some of the GIs shipped them back and stuff. If you have one, they're worth a ton of money these days. But uh, the style is timeless, and, and you can see that in the Earl. We can't wait to get that. This is going to be the first all electric Earl. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be powerful. Yeah. And it's running, it's a hybrid now, so it's running on gas and electric. And John let me rip it around the building a little bit. It's a fun bike, man. It's, it's fun. Well, I understand we have the first tech segment coming up now uh, with Jehu, who's going to be talking about uh, brake regen and technology. Yeah. Um, Jehu played around with some transducers. We, uh, he put one in his bus a while back and did a little segment on it. And, uh, you know, it, we'd like to improve the cars and it improves the braking. The, the transducer gives you a variable regen, so it's not just a single rate. It's variable depending on where you are on the brake pedal. And, and actually, if you play around, around with the programming a little bit, you can really dial these things in to get you really good stopping distance. Well, he's an expert. Do you want to go see what he's done with his segment yeah. now? Yeah, watch him do some brake checks in the parking lot and have fun with it. Show it to us, Jehu. Yeah, take it away. Welcome to another quick tip of the Great EV Show. Today we're going to be talking about hydraulic transducers, what they are, what they do, and why you should install one in your electric vehicle. One of the many advantages of using an AC motor system on your DIY electric car is the fact that you can use regenerative braking. 
This feature is present in most of the OEM cars being sold today and is, for the most part, a clear indication of a modern electric drive system. Regenerator braking works by turning your electric motor into a generator whenever it's not needed to push the car. It sends the generated power back to your battery while at the same time stopping your car. And some cars like the Tesla Model S and the BMW i3 are set to regen as soon as the driver backs off the accelerator pedal, allowing drivers to essentially use one pedal driving style. While other cars like my Chevy Volt apply regen only when the brake pedal is pressed. Both of these approaches work great and it takes very little effort to get you used to them. The beauty of the AC systems available to us DIY folks in recent years is of course that you can set them to do either one of the region styles, or both, and that is the case with my Samba. I wanted to set neutral region to about 10%, just enough to allow the motor to feel like the old BW interior combustion engine. But I also wanted to add region on the brake pedal to 8 with the ever notoriously wimpy drum brakes found on these old air cool BWs. And the only way to do that is by using a hydraulic transducer. If you guys remember back in episode 10 of the eSamba project series, I installed a transducer and hooked it all up. I ended up going to HP EVS and those guys helped me to turn all the functions on the Curtis controller and they tuned it all for me. So this is a generic uh, hydraulic transducer. This one will do 1000 PSI, which is better than the 500 PSI that I have on my Samba. Uh, you are gonna need, of course, to buy one of these. You don't have to buy the premium brand like the MSC that I have uh, on my Samba. You can buy one of these. These are just as good, and you can save a lot of money by buying one of these. Um, I also used a, a T um, that is made for the BWs, uh, brake lines. They usually install them in the back to split the line coming from the front of the master cylinder and it splits it off to go to each uh, of the wheels in the back. Uh, you can buy one of those or you can just order one of these. These are going to be available at EV West. And uh, as far as I know, they're about a couple of bucks, he said. So this is going to be a more affordable option for you guys to buy. And essentially what it does, it just it adds an, an extra port on your system so that you could screw the hydraulic transducer on your brake lines. Uh, you can install this like I did way out there in the back of the car. Um, but you could also do it in the front where your master cylinder is at. And um, you can just buy the little lines, either the uh, hard lines or, or the soft lines, depending on your application, depending on your model or vehicle and stuff. You will also need, of course, uh, to have access to one of these, which is a Curtis Controller Programmer. And you can buy these, of course, uh, and I think you could probably rent them from some place. So you'll have to look for that and try to find out um, how to get your hands on one of these so that you can mess and enable some of the functions on your controller. We're gonna run through a simple setup uh, using this controller. Uh, keep in mind that this is an early version of the software on my controller. Uh, I believe it's 308. Um, and this might be uh, an early version of this controller. I've seen pictures of newer ones, but it should be pretty similar to what you will find. So let's run through these things. Um, in order to set up your new hydraulic transducer, you have to go into the program, user settings, um, then there's forward, reverse, max speed, control mode, restraint, current limits, throttle, brake. So then you find the brake one and you enable it. Um, it's probably going to come off as a default and so you have to turn it on. Here we go. We just turned it on. 
you can go and choose the type brake type uh, and it has one through five and I have two brake dead band it's at one volt uh, you can set it one through five also on that one and then the brake map is 72 percent then there's brake max it's set at five volts right now then the brake offset it's a hundred percent brake filter is 10 hertz uh, blc brake enable is off so those are my settings that you have and we can play with those until you get your brake just exactly how you want it i think for me the aim is really to have full region brake before or just just before or right as the mechanical brakes start kicking in and of course that's to help the the uh, awful brakes that these old cars have um, and that way it'll it'll send more of the power back to your battery so that way it's it's more efficient and stuff so let's do a test and see how it works with the region on and then with the region off we're gonna make a mark um in the ground and then just go i don't know we'll pick a speed like let's say 20 miles an hour and see how fast i can stop from 20 to zero and then we'll run it once with with without the uh the region break on and then once with and see how much of a difference that makes okay let's do that All right, the results are in. Out of the three passes, the best that we can get without region was 16 and a half feet, and with region was 10 um, and a half feet, basically. So you gain about four feet at, at that speed. But this is only, uh, keep in mind that this is only going 20 miles an hour to zero. Um, region usually works better at the higher RPM. Uh, and then it starts tapering off towards the, the lower RPMs. So this is this makes a huge difference once you're doing 60 miles an hour and then you step on your brake. It really adds about the same braking uh, force as the mechanical brakes. So there you go, guys. That's what a hydraulic transistor can do for you on your DIY electric car. Um, thanks for watching this month's quick tip. And now we go back to the studio with Michael and Hutch. So we got a new uh, spec now, I guess 60 to zero. I want to see that car. bus go 60 <laughs> to zero on full regen. We yeah. want stop test <laughs> measured out to yeah, the We end. want to see some high speeds. We want to see some lockups or something, right? Oh yeah. yeah. When I got a new yeah. shirt for Jeho too, dude, yeah. we have to tell, we can't we have well, to you know, surprise he was, him. He was down here with his bus and uh, we were driving around and he let me do some brake checks. And uh, you know, I was looking at those Safari windows. I'm like, man, I can pretty much eject myself right out the Safari window. <laughs> 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 but his, his bus is great. It, it goes fast and it stops fast. And that variable region, is great um, you know we, we'd highly recommend if you're doing a conversion put a brake transducer in your car do the variable regen it, it's almost like putting power brakes in an old car it's great well, yeah. so uh, this is the best part. The EV West event that's going to be at the Formula E Long Beach. Uh, right. This is the coolest news. If you haven't got it, what people don't get is this, the, the E Formula Racing is incredible. It's yeah. fast. It's yeah. quiet. You can even take a baby since Mike's having his baby soon. <laughs> and uh, Mike's done a great breakdown of the Formula E and knows some really neat details about the drivers, who's in it, some of the history. So tell us a little about what you did. Well, with you know, we're excited. Race. We're going to have a little get together right we have formula e coming to the west coast uh, in two months and we're gonna have a little ev show get together we'll probably post up somewhere put something online maybe make an announcement in the next show and uh, we'll meet some of our viewers and hang out and watch formula e and to get a little bit jazzed up uh, they just finished that awesome race in uruguay i mean right down to the wire so again. is this and, gonna be like an and EV? your guy uh john eric verne who just signed with ferrari oh 
test driver. You know, all I need to do is just put a little prancing horse on something and you just get all excited. <laughs> We're going to have a flash mob EV West style at the Formula E Long yeah. Beach. <laughs> well, John Eric Byrne, you know, he finished his Formula, his Formula One, um, the season just ended. So he stepped into a Formula E car right out of the gate, gets pole position and um, well, we'll roll footage. I don't want to spoil the ending. Can we interview him for the next show? God, that'd be great. It'd be awesome. Yeah. We're looking for an interview from you. We're looking to track you down. We'll have our people get in touch with his people. Let's look at the show. Uh, yeah, let's watch the, the Formula E. The highlights. Pumped up. Nice. The highlights are awesome. All the red lights on, and we go green in Uruguay, and it's a great start. Look at that from Nelson Piquet Jr. Is he into the lead of the race on the run down towards the first corner? Yes, he is. Piquet Jr. leads. Second for jean Eric Byrne. It's third for Sebastian Buemi. That inside line really was quicker. That's Piquet Jr., then Byrne, then... Buemi, then Prost, then Alga Schwari, and I think Nick Heidfeld might have got past Lucas de Grasse. And then it's Jano Trulli and Karun Chanduk behind. A little bit of a lock-up on the inside, but nothing too dramatic. Jaime Alga Schwari not troubling the apex of 17, but PK Jr. still leads as we go into the breaks through the chicane. And he is right up behind Nelson PK now. And don't forget, Jean-Eric Verne has the fan boost, so he could deploy that whenever he feels like it to give himself uh, extra power. Here comes Bird, oh, all by himself, all by himself. Oh. Uh, disappointed Sam Bird walking away from his car, and, and that is a real shame. The safe try and get across to that side as quickly as he could, but it just wasn't quick enough. And look at the plumes of sand coming off. We're right by the beach here in Uruguay, and, uh, and you can tell, can't you? In we come into the first corner. That's Michaela Ceruti's rain light. We're getting a very nice close up of, and Bird gets really slowed down, there and there's center, center on the right hand side. Under braking, we go for turn one. That's Yano Trulli in front of us. Oh, it's coming to a stand. Still. Look at it. Look at the, the, the dust there. And again, everybody, a little, oh. little rub, but that was that was really about it. Yeah, covers the inside line. Oh, a little a bit little, of a nudge. A little tap there just to wake him up. And yeah. look at these cars, nose to tail all the way through those fast chicanes. And they're fighting them too. This turn 13, big bump right in the middle there. But they're fighting the cars because they're trying to keep the momentum up. They're trying to save Ooh. energy. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. And there's the Qualcomm safety car deployed again to uh, recover Antonio Felix de Costa's car. He looked back to the lead of the race, Nelson Piquet Jr., four tenths of a second clear of Jean-Eric Byrne, through the right-hander of 13. Look you at them see the moving. I mean, that is, you know, that's what we've been asking for, cars sliding around a little bit. That's He's really on a mission in the second Andretti car, but we go on board with Jean-Eric Byrne, so close to the back of Nelson Piquet Jr., and Jr. knows it, so he covers the inside line on the way down towards the hairpin. As we'll see here, he'll sit in the middle of the circuit. Vern thinks about it, but he's not close enough. Look at that, Sarazan going through. Six, nine. And that's allowing Matthew Brabham to come through. We're hearing Jean-Eric Vern on the team radio telling his energy level. Oh, that's rude on Matthew Brabham. Good. That's, is that Sarazan? Yep. Yeah, that's not, not, not cool. Look that's at the... that, Jean-Eric Vern is through into the lead of the race. It must have been down at the hairpin that Vern made the pass. Nelson Piquet Jr. drops to second place. Across the line then comes Vern, and they're lapping Karun Chandok. So Chandok's running into trouble. Here's the battle for second place. Massive lockup from Boemi. Is he going to get that stopped in time? No, he has no. to go across the runoff. <laughs> Sarazan up into eighth place. Race leader in the pits. Jean-Eric Vern is in the pits now. Meanwhile, Jano Trulli is getting a little bit angry with Stefan Sarazan. But here's the pit stop. So Jean-Eric Vern in. This is his first one of these pit stops under pressure here. First time he's ever done it. So. It looks like Vern. Oh, here we go. It looks like oh, Sarazan. He's, oh, he's already in trouble. The car was already broken. So, yeah, he was being very, very aggressive on the defence, wasn't he? Bruno Senna going side by side and making a move. And uh, oh, this is where it all went wrong ah, for him. Not Bruno's fault at all, no. was it? Yeah, what no, it can just, you do? I think he did well not to, 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 to damage it. Whereas, look at him hanging on to there when it's crabbing. He's still flooring it, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, lad. <laughs> And here comes Trulli, looking towards the inside, towards 17. This is ambitious, That's Yano. A great move. <laughs> oh, not really sure what he thought he was going to achieve. Watch for Brabham, there. though. Watch for Brabham. And here's what happens to Matthew Brabham. Oh, he's lost it on the way in, uh, and just, this is going to hurt. Just overcommitted. The wheels are already broken. Look, I'm stuck behind Trulli. Oh yeah. Just lock the rear. Oh, Brabham. Did Here you ever is. pick those gloves up though? Yeah, he'll need them. He'll need them. Cheap, yeah. So the safety car in this lap, and there's the Andretti car being. Hoisted spectacularly away. He's Later. There. Well, oh, and Buemi's out of shape. Does he keep that on the circuit? Coming through the first corner. Where's Buemi? Did he cut did, the corner? Did he shortcut. Doubtful. We'll have, we'll have to wait. We'll down they come. Up here. 
towards the second chicane and Buemi's going again he must have some sort of brake problem or, or regen issue uh, further back in the pack that'll be to try and get past Garcia but through the final corner comes Sebastian Buemi he's got Nelson Piquet Jr. right up behind him but it's victory for Sebastian Buemi and Edams in the third round of Formula E it was bloody difficult not to make a mistake and when you went slightly over the limit and the wall was waiting as it always is in a street course so John Eric Verne, you know, we, I, it wasn't in the highlights there, but he was leading the whole race until I think two laps to go and uh, his car crapped out. No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, you know, hey, new technology, right? Yeah, but incredible. Yeah, incredible. And Sebastian Buemi there at the end. Um, you know, maybe there's a problem with his regen. The guy's like locking up. There's no problem with his regen. The guy was just driving the wheels off of the thing. I was as tight as track. These yeah. guys are running so yeah. fast. Yeah. And uh, kudos to Bruno Senna. He, he got sixth in that race, and he finally got some points. It's his third Formula E race, and he managed uh, to not get any points in the first two. And, and uh, you know, we got relatives of both Elaine Prost and, um, and Ayrton Senna in this race, which, you know, if you guys are Formula One guys in the early 90s, I mean, you, you couldn't even say the word Formula One without Bruno and, uh, excuse me, Ayrton Senna and Elaine Prost in there. I mean, those guys, they had one of the biggest rivalries in all of Formula One history. So, so what do you forecast is going to happen in Long Beach? That's what I'm uh, Oh, man. Uh, lots of tire smoke, lots of drifting. It's going to be fun. It's awesome. Be fun. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we are uh, moving on into our next segment. Which is <laughs> the Chatamo? Should we talk about Chatamo? Should we talk about quick charging? Yeah. I mean, we... if we're going fast, uh, you know, part of the whole deal with an EV is getting it charged up fast. And a lot of these cars, you know, you take them home, you plug them into your wall box, and you have a five to eight hour wait before it charges up. But we've got the level three DC chargers. Basically, the Tesla supercharger is one of the networks. And we have another one called Chatamo. Uh, it's one of the most popular quick charging networks out there. And we can't take advantage of it yet. But the idea behind it, which is revolutionary, and we talked about this the other day, is the Chatamo takes an eight-hour charge time and can get you down to 15, 20 minutes, a yeah. cup of coffee, two cups of coffee. Yeah. So if you can get your full charge on your batteries in 15 or 20 minutes, yeah. we've got a contender to knock gasoline out of the market. It's a game changer. That's a game changer. Yeah. And, and that's what, when you see the Chatamo segment, we'll give a brief overview of the interview with Tony Williams, which is awesome, yeah. but we'll have a full... A uh, 20 minute interview is uh, as, as a link on our EV show website that you can watch the whole right, episode. Right, right. We had Tony in here. Uh, it was a long interview, so we got the complete, uh, complete interview on the evshow.com website. But for now, we're just going to do a condensed version. And you know, Tony's a great guy. He, uh, he actually, um, when I first met him, we were doing some work on the Mexican 1000 Baja all electric. And so he helped us out a little bit with that, and uh, we did some work together. He's a great guy. So it and, sounds like you and Tony might be doing some more work this year oh, yeah. coming up oh, yeah, in yeah, Baja. Yeah. Oh, hey. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, so back to this, just the, the game-changing nature of the charging. What's the evolution time frame going to be uh, for these chargers for their, you know, when are they going to be readily available to where right. I could charge the Ferrari in 20 minutes and get my 100 miles back right. so I can leapfrog to L.A. until we have the new battery tech to I, get that up to I thought you were going to put it miles. in terms of cups of coffee again. Do you notice how you do that? That's, oh, that's a you know what? Cup of it's going to be more cups of coffee because they're smaller, but it doesn't matter. The consumption is going to be the same. We do take viewer feedback seriously. I can uh, get a smaller somebody cup. Somebody told you that you need a smaller cup of coffee. I hear it. And we delivered. It's voting. Yeah, you got a smaller cup of coffee. It keeps barking. Yeah. So um, here's, the, here's our interview with Tony Williams. He came by a couple days ago and uh, spent some time with us. And let's go ahead and check out uh, Tony Williams with Quick Charge Power. And his, uh, um, he's, got a, he's got it working in the car right now. Let's look so at it. So he's running around charging up with Chatamo. Let's see it. All right. Well, today we have a special guest. We have Tony Williams of Quick Charge Power. Hey, thanks for coming by. Thank you for ha having me. Yeah, Happy New Year to you, too. And, and Happy New Year. Yeah, um, it's getting to be that time. Yeah, we met a couple years ago um, in the EV space, and you've been doing the uh, BC to BC rally, British Columbia to Baja, California. Yeah, we did that uh, for two years, 2012-2013. Uh, we haven't yet done a 2014 version, and we right. probably won't. But uh, we probably will come back in 2015 and do it again. Oh, good. Oh, good. And something will make it easier this time around. Well, uh, we hope to have uh, for the, uh, the next rally on at least the Toyota RAV4 EV a full production capable Chatamo plug, much like this one right here. And uh, we currently have two prototypes running. And uh, they're, we're getting the bugs out of the software and the firmware and the, 
Uh, the prototypes are coming along well here in the next month or so. We will have uh, another six to eight cars that will join the alpha test. Uh, we hope to move on to a beta test about first quarter, late first quarter wow. of this year. I mean, this is fantastic news. So basically, you have the RAV4 that uh, Toyota was a little short-sighted on not putting it <laughs> a level three charge unit in it, even though it has one of the larger packs of all the EVs on the market. And you have this up and running in your RAV4. I do have it running, and as a matter of fact, we drove the car here today. Uh, I drive it um, pretty much every day, um, and, and I actually have two of them at my house, so I trade off now and then between cars. And uh, both cars, uh, the original card that had this had a prototype card. Now we've moved on to an alpha card, and, right. and we'll have, uh, like I said earlier, we'll have our beta card uh, sometime at the end of uh, this quarter. So how do we sign up for this beta test? Well, the, the, I got a couple cars out there. The good we, news is I, I see the cars. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Any car that has a battery, we can charge with Chatmo, and okay. that's something that might not be intuitive to a lot of folks, but uh, so, you, you don't really need a fancy BMS. You don't really need a lot of things because there's only just a certain amount of information we need about right. the battery to make this compatible. Our, right. our software will do all the thinking. Right. All we need is the battery and some real basic information. Right. Right. Okay. So this is something that you're going to be selling and marketing to folks out there? This is something well, that we could perhaps put in our store? And, well, uh, I, this is something... Or you understand why we're pretty excited about well, this, right? Well, now I wonder why you brought me in. It seems like you want to sell my product. but It wasn't just for the hot coffee, right? Here's the beauty, is that you're going to be able to sell this product, I suspect, this summer. Wow. And uh, by this summer, we will have all the bugs worked out on both the Toyota RAV4 Wow. which is a fully uh, Tesla-powered car that most folks might not know right. as, uh, uses yeah, the Model Tony, S. Tony, uh, you know, when we first met, he actually let us drive his car, and uh, we did some pretty healthy burnouts. That's right. Yeah, thing. now yeah. I remember, yeah. EV, EV well, US first style, we, right? Well, first, first we took the BMW out, and I think right. you, you introduced me to what a, a real yeah. EV could do. And I said, well, I don't think this RAV4 is that bad, and then we went out and uh, yeah, you know, no, annihilated was, the tires uh, for a little bit. All safely, of course, and oh, yeah. not on public roads. Oh, that would be legal. streets. Uh, we rented the track. Yeah, man. I, I am just really looking forward to this summer. We'll put them in the store. We'll put them in some cars. Sounds uh, good. I'm going to go to your website and sign up for the, <laughs> <laughs> the beta test, alpha well, test. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll uh, like I say, we'll be conducting that shortly, and uh, we'll hopefully have it ready this summer. Right. And you have a show coming out. I do. Uh, we're going to start. It's not going to be quite as fancy as your show because, fancy. <laughs> because I, we're I, don't, shop I don't have the beauty of this fantastic <laughs> the shop to work in, but uh, we're just going to have a show that's going to be real uh, specific to the electric vehicle industry. It's not right. going to be, uh, we're not going to get into a lot of other subjects, specifically electric vehicles that are production ready. Right. So, so nothing not, that not we conversion. have. Nothing you have. No conversions, no equipment. Uh, it'll be specific well, we'll to cars. Well, we'll just keep cross-pollinating. You can and have us on your show. We'll, we'll sit, we'll sit yeah. hutch over. <laughs> now we're, and we're going to call it simply EV Critic. Oh, there you go. So it's Everybody a, loves a critic. And, and <laughs> it's something that I felt that we were lacking in the industry because uh, early on, I was involved with the Nissan Leaf, and mm -hmm. we had some issues with it, with that vehicle. And you, I found very quickly it was difficult to find people who would be critical of it, who were proponents right. of electric cars, right. because everybody was so afraid to shake up yeah. anything because we were so worried that it might stop electric vehicles. Yeah. And, uh, and and quite, quite frankly, the opposite was true. Yeah. If we didn't get that car right, right. that was going to stop Yeah, the most cars. outspoken critics are the biggest fans because they just want to improve it, but it's often and, misunderstood. Uh, so, right. yes, I, I got a lot a lot of criticism, yeah. and I thought, boy, a lot of criticism. <laughs> yes, I guess I'm a critic. Just play off of that, right? <laughs> well, thanks again for coming out again. Uh, you know, I think 2015 is just going to be a great year. It's going to be a fantastic yeah, year. Yeah, it really is. I mean, there's so much good news that we've got going on. And, and thanks for coming by. We really appreciate it. We'll keep you guys posted on his project. Uh, check him out at EV Critic. And uh, hey, thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll see ya. All right, so that was Tony Williams. And you know, we had to condense that interview a little because we got such a long show today. But uh, the full entire interview is on uh, evshow.com. So you can go by and check that out. Yeah, look forward to seeing the Chatamo develop and get into more cars this year. Yeah, and you know, we dressed up the website a little. We have show links now. So any of the products, any of the segments that we cover in the show, we actually have a, a, a link and you can make it easy and just click on it and go for it. All so, right, now. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, um, uh, we, this is a community effort, and we can't do this without our, our viewers, and uh, we had some wonderful viewers send in uh, some great project information, a lot of cars that they're working on and stuff like that, and one just really stood out. Uh, so this is, our, this is going to be our project of the month uh, free giveaway, and we're going to give away subscriptions to yep. Charge DV Magazine. Yep. 
And uh, yeah, they were nice enough to uh, help out. They gave us some free subscriptions to give away. So this month's winner is uh, Al Swackhammer. Oh, and he gave a great auto union video, and you, we're going to show that segment. What are you doing over here? I'm reading one of the best magazines ever. Okay, just yeah. making sure. That's, yeah, uh, look, at the, look at some of this EV material. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> so Al Swackhammer has an auto union car, and a lot of guys don't know this. You know, this is uh, Audi was a formation of four different auto companies that came together, and they started making uh, cars under the term under the name Auto Union, and you know, they since have turned into Audi. But um, Audi in Germany actually went and covered Al's car, so I know we got some pictures of it up that we're going to run, but we're going to run this short video that was produced by Audi um, of Al's car, and it's just awesome. He's up in the um, the northwest. Up in the Seattle area, it's a great area for EVs. But um, yeah, let's let's. Yeah, Al wrote into us and we talked to him. What a great guy! I, I, I don't even think he, he was just being nice. I don't even think he knew he was. Uh, uh, he won. So uh, Al, if you're watching the show, you won. Yeah, we surprised you. You didn't yeah. know you were on the show either, Al. Yeah, and uh, if you would like to have your car submitted for a project of the month, um, go ahead and email us at giveaway at evshow.com. Yep, and yep. look below. Yep, giveaway at evshow.com. Send us pictures of your uh, car and your project, and uh, we'll take it from there. We're going to review them all, and we're going to give away uh, Charge TV every month. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Let's see you, Al. All right. My name is Al Swackhammer. I live in Edmonds, Washington, which is an outskirt of Seattle. My first love with Audi was due to the Quattro. Since the 1984 Quattro, I have not owned anything but either a Volkswagen or an Audi. The latest car is a 1960 DKW 1000S, badged as an auto union. It was a love at first sight. In the Northwest, we pride ourselves of being green and environmentally conscious. So I decided to make it an electric car. sure that I figured it would be perfect or it would work perfectly, but I never had any doubts that it would work. I've become very attached to this car. I know it like the back of my hand, having taken it completely apart, massaged it, and put it all back together. I am pleased that I did this project. I am heartfelt that I was able to bring this car back to new. And I, I enjoy driving it very dearly. And I am Al Swackhammer from Edmonds, Washington. Thanks, Al. What, so, a, what a video. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and Al, I mean, uh, Al, dude, if you're ever free, come down this summer, we'll barbecue, we'll hang out, we'll talk EVs. All right, well, we have the next uh, tech or the, uh, the project update segment on the Ferrari coming up, but there's something we're going to put in the Ferrari product wise that we'd like to talk about first because knowing me, I'm probably going to crash it pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to do a, a new segment. We're just la naming new segments left and right, but uh, we're, this is our ra random act of kindness. And uh, if you send us an email and explain to us why you need some product, we'll send you some free product. Oh, and this is going to relate. So this is the product. Right. This is also right. a giveaway at the evshow.com. Right. Same email, giveaway at evshow.com. And, and, uh, this is the product we're going to give this away? This is the product, and uh, I think you might know what that is. I bet this is, um, hang on. Wait, it's got a, oh, it cut off. That's got to be a, a crash kill switch. It is a crash kill so switch. So when I crash the Ferrari, it's going to cut the power automatically. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to say we special ordered it in Ferrari Red, but they all come that way because... Well. Can't you get this if you push the button, it just dispenses a fifth of JD? <laughs> we'll work on that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, basically we just wanted to give away some products. We wanted to thank our, our viewers out there. So send us an email, tell us why you need a uh, crash sensor in your EV, and we'll send you one for free. Not everyone, but just one. We'll pick a winner. We'll announce the winner in the next show. How's that sound? 
It sounds good. Now, right. do you want to go look at the right. uh, so update on the last 30 days of the Ferrari project? You just can't wait to get into it. I can't. Can you? Yeah. I'm just chomping I'm at the bit. Chomping. Guzzling your coffee. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's go watch uh, the second segment of the uh, Ferrari project and get caught up to speed. I think this will bring us current now. Correct. Okay. Let's check it out. Yeah. Here we are for the first update on the Ferrari project in the field. We are at SRD with Justin Herman, who owns the shop. This is a known, renowned Baja fabrication racing shop. Two-time winner, Baja 1000, Justin Herman here. Yep. Thanks for having us out. Yeah, no problem. Glad you guys could come. Well, this is going to get exciting. We're, for the first time, going to start showing you what we're doing to the Ferrari to fabricate it to get ready for the triple engines. Justin's going to walk through some of the specific improvements that we're doing that are going to be of interest to you guys. So. Uh, uh, are you fast? The fastest. <laughs> All right, let's get after it. Cool. So here on the 308 Ferrari, we've got our G50 Porsche transaxle, and we've actually turned it around and mounted it upside down, which is something that factory Porsche race cars actually do. The cool thing about this transmission is, being an off-road Baja shop, we were trying to figure out a cool way to mount this thing and make sure that we got it square in the chassis of this vehicle. Conveniently, the same CV joints that we run in an off-road race car are the same CV joints that a Porsche G50 transmission runs, which is just a simple 930 German CV. So we used a couple old casings off of our race car that weren't any good to us anymore and CNC'd out on our plasma table a couple brackets to where we could support the transmission just temporarily off of bolting some old CVs to the car setting it on this cross member here and making sure that the transmission was perfectly level and square to the car. What we did find is that when we wanted to put the transmission at the right angle to make the bottom electric engine miss the front cross member is that we were hitting the back cross member here. So we had to remove this middle piece, design these brackets in SolidWorks that get a top and a bottom plate installed on them and welded back together came up with the perfect solution for our angle problem. We also are running the Patrick Motorsports shift kit on this thing. So we had to make a short nose version of this transmission. Along with when we took this off to machine this down shorter, we made a quick little drawing of the bolt pattern. So now we're gonna take this bolt pattern of the nose cone and reverse engineer it put it back in SolidWorks and we'll see CNC out some brackets that look similar to this and we're actually going to hang the transmission from some polyurethane bushings that are going to mount over here on the sides of the frame with a tubular cross member. So here on the front of this 308 we got the front battery box right here which is going to hold 24 of the 48 total batteries on this vehicle. It had a little bit of crunch damage so the red is what was original Ferrari, and obviously the raw steel is what we're putting in now. Um, the Xing down here below is to reinforce the front where our new Euro bumper brackets are gonna all attach. And the angle iron pieces here and here in the back up over the sway bar are what's gonna actually hold the battery box in and keep everything secure in the front. All right, so Justin's helping solve the problem with reducing the weight of this car. For the EV, we want to lose as much weight as we possibly can. The first place we started was with the bumpers. The USA bumpers on this car are incredibly heavy, puts a lot of load on both ends of the car. We have the European fiberglass bumpers. This is a rear. We may or may not use this particular bumper. We have the front European bumper, and then we also have the grill that goes in with the standard USA grill. From what we understand, the grill could use a whole nother bar all the way down to modify it to be the equivalent of the European. We think we have a pretty neat solution to use the USA grill with the European bumpers. Stand tuned for the next episode to see what we do with that. On the bumpers, Justin's got something special up his sleeve for the USA to Euro bumper conversion brackets for the Ferrari 308. And, and from what we're going to do here between going from the US bumpers to the Euro bumpers, we're going to lose like 90% of the weight of the US bumpers by switching to these fiberglass composite bumpers. Um, and right now, we're designing in SolidWorks a bracket that's going to adapt a Euro bumper to the USA brackets that were originally on the car. Now, we're going to run a set of 50 of these after you design them. Uh, and we're going to have a mill, so we're going to have them on hand for anyone Definitely, who wants yeah. to do uh, the Euro bumper conversion and just needs a simple bracket mount system for their 308. 
Justin's going to have it on hand, so we'll make it available to everyone and we'll figure out the details later. Yep. So one thing that we're going to take from our off-road side of what we do and apply it to this EV Ferrari is we're going to take a bunch of billet, really cool, really light, and really strong pieces that we do on our CNC machine here, and we're going to enforce, reinforce the strut towers and also give us a place to bolt all of our controllers for this triple motor setup. Hey, now you've seen what Justin's doing here at SRD in phase one of the fabrication. So next show, we're going to see some other fabrication. What are you going to do in the next show that we're going to look at? Yeah, ne next show, we're going to start on a lot of the billet stuff. We'll introduce you to David, our full-time CNC machinist, and we'll start making some cool stuff out of some aircraft aluminum. This is going to be awesome. So uh, this car is going back to EV West, where we're going to put the three electric motors in and have some more footage for you the next show. So you, you and Justin are like two peas in a pot up there. Oh, I like that guy. He's fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll have him down here and do his, some more segments. His fabrication skills are insane. We're going to yeah. show that. We're going to have some of that definitely in the next yeah. episode yeah. Uh, when he carves out where the controllers are going to be in the arm. That was a sample that he had uh, from the front end of a Baja truck. So when it jumps 10 feet in the air and it lands, it keeps the frame from folding in and it goes across the top of the motor mount. It's All incredible. This jumping and crash sensors. Is this <laughs> yeah. a... It's a theme. It's a theme. Uh, uh, so yeah. that far is Coming back to you, it's going to be in your lap, Mr. Engineer. I, I can already see it. We're going to have to program the power out of that thing. We'll, 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 give you half, we'll give you half of one of those motors. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we are going into, I think, the ferro arm technology that you have in the shop now. All oh, right. So, you know, this is great because this has come in handy. We're going to use it in the Ferrari because we're doing a full custom motor mounts and everything kind of from the ground up. And we picked up a piece of equipment recently that really helps us out with this. I mean, gone are the days of us cutting out cardboard templates and all that stuff. So, you've got this. Let's take a look at uh, Michael's segment on the ferro arm. Yeah, we're going to measure up a 1975 Alfa Romeo Spider Bell housing. Let's check it out. Hey, so a little behind the scenes today, uh, we're going to demonstrate our ferro arm, otherwise known as a coordinate measuring machine. Uh, it's a device that's used to uh, basically scan, digitize a uh, solid object in 3D space and then uh, import that into some CAD CAM software and then we can use that file to actually manufacture our parts or in this case our motor adapter plates. So here I have a bell housing from a 1975 Alfa Romeo Spider, and we're just going to take some measurement points off of it using uh, the, the surface probe here. Now these machines have become real popular in the past uh, 10 to 15 years and especially more recently the laser version of this machine. Um, they are quite expensive and they're designed to do uh, a little bit more surface modeling, complex curves and things like that. So we use this device because it's very efficient, it's very fast, it's extremely accurate. Um, Accuracy is uh, uh, far below one one thousandth of an inch, so better than anything we need. And uh, we just like to keep it simple and quick because that helps us uh, uh, control the pricing of our products and the things that we make here a lot of the work so anyways I just want to show you how we're going to do this real quick I'm going to do it in real time um, because I think we can do it quick enough um, that it won't be too boring and it will kind of show you how quickly we can scan these and how accurately so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a surface plane in space if you remember from your uh, high school geometry three points determine a plane so I'll take three points kind of far apart and that determines our plane so now I have our plane in our system. I'll pull it up there. There's our surface plane representing our bell housing. The next step, I'm going to find shaft center, and then I'm going to do the diameter in the center of all of these holes going around it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Pull that up. Tell the computer we're going to do circles. And again, three points determine the center of a circle and the diameter, actually. So, so we got that in there, and I'm just going to just kind of follow it around. Just pull three points off of each one. And the last one. So there we go. We got all of our points, uh, points now, the circles and the diameters. And we're just going to go ahead and do the outside pattern and then we'll finish it up. So you go ahead and do a freehand draw here and tell it that we want our surface plane. And there we go.
And I'm going to start at the starter and run it around. Now this is a cast object, so it's got some seams and some little rough pieces in here. And I'm not too worried about that. We're trying to get the general shape. And then later on uh, in SolidWorks, we can go through and kind of smooth a few of the things out and some of the cast seam lines and, and whatnot. So I'm just going to go ahead and start it right here and just run it all the way around the outside. Redraw that little bugger. It's also uh, projecting onto a 2D plane. So in sections where I have a notch like this, I can actually go up and down and it's just gonna do a normal projection onto our surface plane, which is kind of nice. And around. And there we go. So there we are in a 3D space. Let me remove the plane here. It'll be a little easier to see. And we'll turn you off. I'll redraw it. And so there we go. There's our pattern. So uh, we can take this pattern now, highly accurate. We can drop it into SolidWorks and create a file to actually machine our aluminum uh, motor adapter plates, our transmission bell housing adapters. And uh, we can do that real quick. I just wanted to show you in real time how quick and easy it is and the degree of accuracy that we get from this. So uh, thanks for joining me for a little behind the scenes tip today. And we'll see you next month. Hey, uh, great job, Michael. I love uh, how fast you work. Hey, I thought... I'm right here. Oh, I th oh sorry. <laughs> Let's redo that. No, this is great. Keep it rolling. <laughs> no, are you kidding? You know, you've been Dude, coming... you're like a robot. <laughs> you've been coming over to the house, uh, watching me at my dining room table, getting this thing set up and running. I'm but you, you work just as fast as you did on that. I can't believe how fast you touch the dots all the way around and model <laughs> thing. <laughs> I worked like you when you're on coffee. I, I mean, it's true. I don't know. I'm going to ask what kind of coffee you yeah, drink. Yeah. Well, anyways, great device, great time saver. And, and more than anything, it's, it's accurate. It's highly accurate. So uh, no, no more of this uh, cardboard template stuff, right? And you're going to use that on the Ferrari, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, if, had you, to ask. if you pay me enough money, I'll use it on the Ferrari. God, it's getting tough around here. <laughs> it is getting uh, tough. <laughs> let's look and see what Matt's got because Matt's in our show and hey. he's going on the technical segment with joining uh, the twin AC76s for the Postal yeah. Jeep project. You're not the only multimotor project in town. I don't like to think like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, we got Matt, he's doing a dual motor setup, two AC76s by HPVS, and we're putting them in our 1978 Jeep DJ5, right hand drive postal truck. I know you're gonna put on the outfit later on and deliver some mail. You don't take any convincing for stuff like that. Oh no, it'll happen. Oh yeah, he's gonna deliver mail. And uh, so we're gonna do some project uh, segments in the future, putting the motors in and bolting it all up. But for now, we're just gonna um, show how we put the motors together. Uh, Matt, take it away. Hi guys, Matt Hobber here with EV West. Uh, today we're going to couple up two AC76 motors. Uh, each one is, is putting out a peak of 170 foot-pounds of torque at 90 horsepower, so that's going to give us a total of 180 horsepower and 340 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, this is going to be our, our first uh, direct drive application that we're doing here in the shop. Uh, it's going in a right-hand drive 78 Jeep CJ5 Postal Van right-hand drive. Um, we're going to be connecting the two motors. We've got our, our actual our motor mount here. So there's, there's no banding or anything that needs to be attached to these motor mounts. This is actually integrated all into the aluminum plates now. So as soon as this is all put together, it literally will drop right in the place of the stock engine. Um, let's go ahead and grab the couplers right now, slide those on, and we'll uh, put the two motors together. So we've actually let our Lovejoy couplers here sit on the heat gun for about 20, 30 minutes now. Um, the idea behind that is you want to heat these couplers up. They are an interference fit so that they just slide right onto the shaft without burring it or anything like that. Uh, let, let's go ahead and do that right now. And once the, uh, once the coupler goes on the motor, you've got to kind of tap it on pretty quick. So we'll get it started here. Oh, that one actually went on pretty good. So that bottom's out there. Let's go ahead and put on this other side. Now these couplers would not even get started before we heated them up. So this just kind of gives you an idea of the expansion, what happens there. So that one went on a little bit tighter. Um, that's kind of what you want. But again, when the, before we heat these couplers up, you actually couldn't even slide them onto the motor. So um, let's go ahead and tighten down the set screws and then we'll put the two plates on and assemble the two motors together. 
It is a good idea. You want to just put a little tiny dab of Loctite on it. You don't want to put too much on here. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to ever get this thing out if you have to. Uh, just a little tiny dab of red Loctite. Now with the interference fit here, it's, I mean, you, you almost don't even need a set screw, but it's, it's still a good idea to put one on. Okay. Do the same thing on the other side. And these couplers are pretty hot, so we'll, uh, We'll probably let them cool for just a second before we put the, uh, the rubber dampener that goes in between the two. Uh, it's, it's a high temp dampener, it'll probably be fine, but uh, just be on the safe side there. So now that we have our, uh, our two Lovejoy couplers uh, mounted to the motors, our set screws are set. They've kind of cooled down a little bit, so uh, let's go ahead and put this. Uh, this is the rubber dampener that goes in between the two. It's just a little spider, I believe is what they call these. Just set that there, and that's essentially it. This other one will go right in between these ears. Uh, but first of all, what we need to do is we need to bolt the two sides of the plates onto here. So we'll just start with this side here. Um, we found with any of these any of these flat taper head bolts, socket caps, um, it is a good idea just to put a little bit of anti-seize on the head. Otherwise, the steel and aluminum. Uh, kind of becomes its own little Loctite and you end up drilling these out if you ever have to take them off. So let's go ahead and uh, just put a little dab of that on all four of these. Doesn't take much. and you're not, You don't want to put them on the threads, just on the head of the bolt to keep it from seizing up. And you can actually do this mounting system uh, with virtually any type of vehicle as long as you have the old engine block. You can, uh, you can do a 3D model of it and make your own mount purchase, just like what we did here to match the Jeep original mounting locations. So let's just go ahead and throw this up here. I'm going to go ahead and start with this side, actually. This one has to be located. Again, so we'll just take all these bolts out, put a little bit of anti-seize on the, on the head of the bolt. Just at the base. Go ahead and just get one started here and start these other ones. Okay, let's go ahead and torque up this other side. All right, so um, one of the things you just want to make sure you don't forget is go ahead and put these bolts in uh, before you mount this plate to the motor. As you can see, they, you uh, can't put them in afterwards. So um, we've got our, um, our rubber dampener in between the two. Uh, let's go ahead and slide these two motors together. Like that. Slides together. Just push these through. There's six bolts on this. Make sure everything looks pretty lined up here. Uh, one of the great things about a Lovejoy coupler is they're very forgiving. So any, any misalignment at all, this will take this right up. Well, that's looking pretty good. Um, this application in our Jeep, uh, we are going to go ahead and go with a direct drive because we are using the AC76. They offer a lot of torque and you should be able to get away with it on a nice lightweight vehicle like what we've got. 
Um, let's go ahead and uh, put the rubber mounts on each one of these sides and get it ready to drop in the, into the Jeep. It is a good idea to try to get new rubber mounts if you can, rather than try to reuse your old ones. Uh, in this case, they were pretty old, saggy, you know, oil soaked. Uh, we got these these uh, mounts here. They were seven dollars each from our local hardware store or uh, parts store. So for that price, you just can't really beat it. So we have the two motors uh, bolted together now. Um, I'd say we're probably in the range of uh, maybe. 360, 380 pounds uh, with the, the adapter setup that's here in the middle. Uh, again, this does bolt directly up to the Jeep mount, uh, stock motor mount location, and these are, these are even the stock Jeep motor mounts. Um, we are running direct drive application, so this is going to go right to the uh, right to the rear drive line on the vehicle. Uh, so we will have to use a forward and reverse switch with this particular one. Uh, total overall length is uh, about 37 and a half inches. Uh, I better call it about 38. Uh, that's end bell to end bell. Uh, basically, you know, it totally leaves you with uh, you know a motor package that's going to give you you know 180 horsepower and uh, about 340 foot pounds of torque. So uh, you know, pretty decent little package here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get it bolted in the Jeep and try to get this thing finished up. Uh, please, you know, please continue to follow us on YouTube and subscribe to that uh, or Facebook or Instagram. We try to keep that uh, up to date. Uh, I'm Matt Haber with EV West. Thanks for stopping by. That's a pretty cool <laughs> paperweight, though. All right, so um, <laughs> if you guys could only see what goes on while we're watching these segments. We're not um, doing this for you. We're doing yeah. it because we're having fun. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, hey, we got to get some work done. Oh, so sure. that was Matt and the twin AC motors. Uh, it's going to be a great setup, man. That thing is going to throw some gravel. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, let's go, let's rip through some products. We got some neat products that we want to kind of explain. Uh, uh, we, we like to take some of our lesser known products and just kind of throw them out there and introduce people to new products. So let's do that real quick. Okay. All right. So one of the things is, you know, when you're a Ferrari, everybody's like, oh my God, my Ferrari gauges can't lose them, right? I mean, you're selling your gauges. Well, not yet. Well, <laughs> we are going to put new cages in though. Right, right. So um, one of the companies that we love is Ziva, Zero Mission Vehicle Australia. We got Ian Hooper over there in Australia just doing a great job with a lot of little products. You guys might know him for this one. It's the uh, Fuel Gauge Driver Plus. And basically that's a neat little gauge that will um, turn your fuel meter into, uh, you know, your regular analog needle gauge yeah. into a battery meter, which is great because uh, people know how to read those already. There's no learning curve there. Um, one of the great things about the Plus version is it outputs a tachometer signal that gives Gives you your your current reading how much amps your motor is drawing and the best thing about this you get these older cars and you like the analog gauges here's one for another project a Porsche project that we got going on but we actually have an analog ammeter so this will tell you your current and it's a nice nice analog gauge you know so it's not digital it's got a little bit of heart and soul in it because it's got a needle we'll check so that out. we love the fuel gauge driver for that you know speed hut did that gauge for that us that is light too yeah yeah it's a stepper I mean, motor it's ounces. a new school gauge you know gone are the days of the video real clean bezel you know. on it good mm -hmm. i mean that is uh yeah. it, you mean it just almost looks like a high end tack yep. uh that's impressive yeah speed hut speedhut.com made in America, great stuff. We love those guys. So uh, some of his lesser known stuff, you know, we had the um, pedals, the uh, throttle pedals in the last episode last month, and we, we failed, you know, we have the smart pedal, which is a great pedal. They're highly active. They're much safer than the resistive type pedals in the older legacy systems. And Ian makes a, a digital pot adapter. So you can hook this up to your older uh, motor controller systems, and they make them compatible with the newer pedals, which is nice. And he's got a built-in five-volt power supply, which is killer. And we we found a little hidden feature in this. Yeah, pedal, no, this didn't is we? this was impressive. The, this was the uh, the the, the smart car pedal. Yeah, the yeah. smart car electronic and that's pedal. Full throttle. And see, there's full throttle right there. Yeah, but we but got a little hidden feature. Turbo. Turbo boost. Yeah. The, the launch. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. So, and we can program that in. It's a, it's a nice little uh, kind of hidden thing in there. And, and uh, what does that do? That allows you to just go all out beyond right, programming? Does right. it supersede programming in the car? Well, it depends on what throttle level you program it to, but uh, it's definitely turbo mode. So you could scare someone. I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point? I love it. Right? Okay. Right? And then uh, this is kind of like a, a little bit of a mini lifesaver. This is the 12 volt low voltage cutoff. And what happens is um, when your 12 volt battery goes below, uh, you know, when it's low and it goes below 12 volts, this will actually disconnect it from the rest of the system. And when you come back to your car, uh, you can connect these two terminals here with a momentary button and it will turn your battery on for 10 seconds, giving you just enough time to actually start the car. 
Uh, you don't really start an electric car. You turn it on. You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll turn on your DC converter, and it will charge up your battery, and away you go. But this is a real lifesaver. A lot of the electric cars tend to be second vehicles for people, so they don't. Uh, sometimes they don't get driven all the time. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you know the hilarity in all of this is that uh, we're doing these you know badass electric vehicles, lithium-ion battery packs, and everything, and most of these cars still leave here with a, <laughs> a 12 volt lead acid battery. Yep, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Um, and then uh, our final product is the E-Stop. Oh, we're going to see uh, uh, John Roselli demonstrate that installation in the mail truck project. Yeah, yeah, we put one already in the mail truck, and I know we're going to do one of these in the Ferrari. You know, uh, something important to mention, you know, electric cars, they don't have compression braking. Right. And they can roll down a hill. Ruin somebody's I could day. Do, I could get out yeah. of the car, walk away, and see the Ferrari going all the way down the hill. Oh, backwards. yeah, especially with you. <laughs> when I fall asleep at the wheel. Yeah, right. So uh, the neat thing is, you you know, it's set up. It comes with a button, and you hit the button, and it pulls your e-brake. We're going to do a, uh, uh, we're going to hook it up to actually the parking gear selector in the uh, Jeep, and we'll do something fun with it. So when you put it in well. park, it automatically sets the yeah, brake. Yeah, automatically cinches it up. Consistent pressure every single time. Hey, before we go to see John's project, I think we have to have an act, a random act of coolness, and oh, because geez. Mike and I both love the bullet knives, the 30 up bullet knives, just tiny little pocket knives. These are so cool. We always carry them around. I'm going to give mine away. This is not in the script. A giveaway <laughs> at evshow.com. I will personally send you mine uh, if you give a good reason on why to use any of these products. Is it even legal to give away knives? <laughs> it's a pocket knife. All right. Well, so this is the pocket knife, but we're going to roll in. We're going to check out John Roselli installing the e-stop in our 1978 Jeep. Take it away, John. My name is John Roselli. I'm working on the 1978 Postal Jeep. It just got lifted, so we're installing the electric push button e stop. It's an emergency brake system. Uh, consistently puts enough pressure on the tires to keep your vehicle from rolling, which is very important in electric vehicles because there's no compression braking. When you put it in park, the only thing that's stopping you from rolling is the uh, emergency brake system. So we'll go look at how that was uh, installed. So we've mounted the e-stop right above me here on the shelf of the chassis. It's very important to mount in a very solid place, usually preferably along the frame. Um, in this case, because the Jeep has a very short wheelbase, it was more convenient to mount on the chassis, but it's uh, very solid. And then we have the cabling run across, over, and then down into the center where the original e-brake cable was. So that's it for the mounting of the e-stop unit. Uh, next time we'll show you the wiring. We're going to do something original where we're going to wire it to the park of the gear selector unit. And um, after that we're going to forget the park, hit it into drive, and shoot some rocks with this gravel machine gun. So I'll see you then. Thanks for that overview of the e-stop, John. appreciate that. We have a a uh, new product, one last product we want to review in the show, uh, the Inlogis, and Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about what this product uh, uh, is bringing. Yeah, you know, great little product. This thing uh, is a, a surge protector for your your wall box, your charger, and uh, believe it or not, even here in Southern California, we got hit by lightning. Oh, yeah, this is true, in this building. Yeah, in this building, got hit by lightning. It cost me like three computers, a router, uh, a couple other things. It, it took some equipment, <laughs> Jesus. I took the lightning <laughs> hit once too, bro. <laughs> uh, Eric Lightning Rod Hutchison over here. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, this is a surge protector and it protects against these sort of things. And even if you don't need the surge protection, this has a, just an incredible added benefit to it. It's got an iPad app and it hooks up through Wi-Fi to your router and uh, you can uh, monitor your energy usage. And uh, there's the app, we'll throw up some stuff of the app uh, running. So this uh, comes with an app on the iPhone. Right. And right. then you can monitor what all the rates and everything and how yeah. you're charging, where your car is yeah. charging live real time from yeah. anywhere with the Wi-Fi. It's great, it's great. I've been demoing it for about a month now. I've been playing around with it. Uh, the other day I was up front working and I'm like, hey, I wonder if the Gia is done charging. I just pulled out my phone. Oh yeah, look at that. It's already going into the uh, current cutback. So it's great, it tells you how much much energy it's using. It can tell you how long it's charged for at what time. You can actually enter your energy rates into it and it will tell you, uh, it will give you an estimated cost like, hey, you spent 25 bucks charging your car this month. Uh, great. I mean, killer app. 
What right? would be the next evolution of this I app mean, if you were developing this app out of curiosity? Well, obviously, we were talking about this earlier, and it was like the ability to turn on and off your charging Like station. the Chevy Volt has. Right, right. And I think Siemens is coming out with that. You know, we, we in our last show, we covered the Gen 2 of the Siemens EVSE, the VersaCharge, and they have a Wi-Fi module that they're working on, but it, it currently has the delay timer, which is great for conversion guys like us because we don't have the preset timer like the Volt and the Leaf and some of the OEM solutions. But um, this is the next step, and they're going to get there. I mean, we it, it's there. Well, that's amazing. I mean, between the Chatamo and then in a device like that that comes out, you could program your car when to turn on and when to turn off. Right. And anywhere where you plug in right. would be phenomenal. Yeah. And it makes you feel important. You got an app. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'm charged. Let's go. <laughs> so, you know, neat little thing. They just got a little module and it just plugs into there and then uh, communicates to the router wirelessly, which is kind of nice. We don't like cables. So that's awesome. And thank you and Logis. I mean, great product. I, I, uh, I know we're, we, we were kind of quick with our reviews and stuff like that, but we can't say enough nice things about this. Uh, it's just a, we'll have links on the website. Yeah. We can go to, yeah. to different products. Can we just products. call this the bitch and product of the show? Sure. Okay. Bitch and product of the show right sure. there. Uh, I think it was a, a complete new show. We have a lot of products. We look forward to your feedback yeah. uh, for our next month's show. It was a long show. Sorry, we went over our hour. I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to fit But there's some really neat hour. products. Yeah. We got a lot of people yeah. in the shop involved. Right, right. And uh, it was exciting doing this. So uh, we're, we're learning a lot. Yeah, let's do some housekeeping and get out of here so we can go drink some tequila. It is New Year's Eve. I, I, let's yeah. go. Okay. Chop, chop. Well, uh, you know, every episode we like to talk about an um, online um, car show that we really like, and we got to talk about Roads and Rides. We got to talk about Robert Angelo. Uh, guy is awesome. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube, look up Roads and Rides. Robert Angelo he used to do uh, Jay Leno, uh, Jay Leno's Garage. He's did that for years, and he's doing his own thing now. Um, if you're a fan of the Mustangs, he just did one on the villain. I mean, just insane. It's cool. Oh, yeah. And uh, he actually, uh, I think about a year ago, uh, covered uh, David Bernardo's Electric Bug. And uh, very, very artistic, very great guy. So we just wanted to give uh, him a shout out at Roads and Rides. If uh, you haven't heard of him, go check him out. It's a well, great show. I want to thank Tony for coming in and yeah. uh, talking to us. Tony Williams came by the other day. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate your time. And uh, we want to uh, thank the staff. You know, we got Matt and Jehu and uh, John. John's actually doing camera duty. Thanks. Thanks, John. Appreciate, Appreciate it. the shop dog's yep. last walkthrough, yep. too. The shop dog. Yep. Had a... Got to call out Ono. Yep. Ono the shop dog. And um, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, we, we wanted to uh, talk about the Telemundo thing. We got oh. a little, uh, some Spanish interviews we did last week. Yeah, you had, uh, you had the whole television station come up and, uh, yeah. and, and film you for an hour in, in complete Spanish. Yeah. The whole shop was Spanish for about an hour the other day. It's great. <laughs> um, if you're in the San Diego area, January 3rd at uh, 5.30 p.m., they're going to air a special on San Diego being a hotbed for EV activity. So much for microbrewing. Yeah, so much for microbrewing. <laughs> that was so 2013. <laughs> now it's all about EVs. So we're going to send a. We're going to have your people contact uh, our mayor, Kevin Faulkner's people. Don, talk to him about uh, some EV stuff. Let's charge it up. Awesome. Uh, we got the new website up, evshow.com. You can contact all of us in our first name. Yeah, uh, we'll uh, list the, all the uh, emails below. Yeah, new emails, new website, and and we did something that uh, some of our readers asked for. They wanted like a kind of a uh, links to the products in the show. So if you saw anything in the show that you like and you want a little more information, um, go to evshow.com. We got some links in there for the show and it will take you to the appropriate page, give you some more information and stuff like that. So. Yeah, you're doing a uh, knockdown job on putting that together. Oh, it's thanks, awesome. Sam. Appreciate it. Uh, I think that's it. Hey, happy new year. Thanks for hanging with us. Yeah, happy yeah. new year. Yeah, let's Cheers. get out of here. <laughs> yeah, We're and uh, we'll see you February 1st in the next episode. Awesome. All right, see you guys. Bye-bye. It's recording right now? Okay. Oh, it's recording right now. You mean right now. Um, Ow now, brown cow. Test. Are you recording? Right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, nah, f it. We're good. Get some technical specs on the coffee mug here. We might as well use the big ones on my cup, huh? Yeah. 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 Uh, a bra. Another <laughs> <laughs> solution, and thank you, Shop Dog, for voting. <laughs> Dude, this guy's selling the steaks right now. What? Hey! <laughs> All right, so let's, gonna, let's hang on a second. <laughs> we'll have to cut that and paste it. Hang on. And Hutch is an idiot, can't remember lines. The triple motor selection. So we're gonna stuff a banana in my face. <laughs> <laughs>